There are certain things that we must understand and why prayer should be a priority to us. There are things that will not happen until we pray. Many, many, many times you find people going through things that they really shouldn't go through. If only they had known how to pray, they could change the situation. History shows us so many things that were changed through prayer. God needs our invitation into our circumstances. Because the Bible says he gave the earth to the sons of men. He gave the earth to human beings to run. And he only intervenes at our invitation. Of course the day will come when he will not require our invitation. And that's when man's lease runs out. Then God's judgment will come in. But while the lease is on, he needs our But apart from recognizing that we need to invite him into our situation, there are things he's also given us authority to make happen. Authority to decide. So in that kind of situation, you're not inviting God to respond. You are responding in his name. This is one of the things that many, many of us around the world have not taken seriously because it's not been taught. We have to realize that the Lord gave us authority. Remember, one of the very first signs he said shall follow the believing ones. He says, in my name they shall cast out devils. Demons. There are many things that are caused by demons. But I want to read to you here. From Acts chapter 12, the Bible records from verse 1. Now about that time, Herod the king, Herod, who was appointed by Caesar. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. You remember, we talk about James and John, the sons of Zebedee, that brother of John was killed this way. So sad. Herod ordered his death. He was a Christian. He was an apostle. And he died. Herod killed him. Herod killed him. Why? Somebody would say, why didn't Jesus do something? Because Jesus gave the, the church the authority to do something. You'll see it in a moment. Herod was arrested. Herod had arrested James. Took James. And the church was watching. I can imagine that some of them were saying nothing will happen. James is a great apostle. James has faith. But James was taken away. They said, James, nothing will happen. The next thing they knew, James was killed. Who lost? God didn't lose. James didn't lose. James went to heaven. The church lost because the ministry of James was cut short. All of what James could have blessed them with was cut away. But that's the way, by extension, God loses. Because the fulfillment of that man's life has not been accomplished. His vision is caught short. So, let's read. And he, verse 2, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews... 
he proceeded further to take Peter also. Look at it. This is what happens all the time. When the people of the world take actions against us, imagine in some countries where churches were destroyed. The government ordered certain buildings, churches to be destroyed. And guess what? There were lots of people who were happy, excited that the government of that day had the boldness to destroy churches. And they said, yes, pull them down. Those people make too much noise. And when the government saw that it pleased the people, they went forth to the larger cathedrals and destroyed them also. Yes. There are laws that have been promulgated in different countries. And some of these laws are anti-Christian in nature. Anti-church. We don't want to say anti-Christ. Because they're not looking at it like that. They're making laws against the churches. Laws against pastors, ministers. And guess what? There are people who are happy about it. James was killed and the Bible says it pleased certain people. And when Herod saw that it pleased the Jews, he decided to increase his violence against the church. His anger against the church. His wickedness against the church. He took Peter also. I don't know what has happened in your country. I don't know what laws they have made. And the church is quiet. Satan thrives in the division of the churches. He thrives as ministers of the gospel are divided. So that he can stop them from praying because he knows that when we come together and pray, nothing that we cannot do. He's so scared of us. So the Bible says, Herod went forth to take Peter also. It says, then were the days of unleavened bread. Look at verse 4. And when he had apprehended him, when he had arrested him, he actually arrested Peter. The chief apostle was arrested and he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers. That's about 16 soldiers. To keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. See, he would first disgrace him. He's going to kill him with ignominy. He has to make a public shame. Shame Peter publicly before the people before killing him. This was his plan. Look at it here. Glory to God. It says, Peter therefore, verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison. I have a semicolon there, a, a colon there. It's not over. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But, I want you to see what happened there. This is the great but. But prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. Look at it. But prayer was made. I like this. I like this. It doesn't say but God changed. No, 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 no. It says but prayer. But prayer. When that law was promulgated, what did the church do? What did the church do? Some members were saying, yes, the government has said this. Oh, the governor has said this. Oh, the local government, whatever. Oh, they've said this, they've said that, the court has said this. If it is against the church, if it is against the progress of the gospel, don't keep quiet, my brother, don't keep quiet, my sister. Pastors, don't keep quiet, call for a prayer meeting. Don't keep quiet because they're going to do worse. Don't keep quiet. Look at it here. Peter therefore was kept in prison. Herod planning to kill him as he had killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. 
But prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping. Oh, I love it. Imagine if you knew you were going to be killed the next day, how would you be sleeping? Peter wasn't bothered. I told you. I can imagine when James was told he was going to be killed because of Jesus. And they said, do you still believe in him? He said, go ahead. Pull your sword. I'll never forget that gentleman. They put him, they were to burn him at the stakes. And they put him there. Ready to set the fire. And they said, John, do you still hold to your faith? Are you ready to recant? He looked at the man who was asking him. He said, light your fire. He said, light your fire. You're wasting your time. Light your fire. Makarabasete. This is the spirit that we are made of. You know, some people think that, oh, when we go through persecutions, we, are, we become afraid. No, no, no. Make no mistakes about it. There's something inside us. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You're not talking about people who are full of fear. Uh-uh. We are bold. The Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. That's how we are. We might be quiet and calm. But when we are stared, Oh, the church will never again go into the corners of defeat. Not again. Not again. Prayer was made without season. And the Bible says in verse 6, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before. <laughs> Think about it. It was the soldiers who were not sleeping. Peter was sleeping. He was sleeping between two soldiers. They couldn't sleep. And you can imagine, they would have been stoned. This man is supposed to be killed in the morning. He's sleeping. He's sleeping. Now you can understand when they told us, count it all joy. When you go through divers tests, count it all joy. He didn't forget what the master said to him. I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. No, we are not afraid. Oh. He was sleeping between two soldiers. Uh, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And the light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side. Hit him on the side. And raised him up saying, arise quickly. And his chains, Malikosa Paradi. And his chains, Mantakabaya. Yegabaya. Radarabaya. I like this. The angel didn't have to do anything to the chains. At his word, the chains fell. The chains fell off. Whew. My, my, my. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself. Oh my goodness, I like this. And bind on, ah, bind on thy sandals. You know, he was not even in a hurry. He says, come on, get your clothes on. Put your sandals on. Because you are going somewhere. Come on, somebody. 